there's a population of patients with epilepsy where you make a diagnosis, um, you put them on treatment, and their seizures are controlled as long as they take their medication. And that applies to about two thirds of the patients we see. And those are the patients we love to take care of because it's very gratifying. They are, as long as they take their medication, they are seizure free. And in many of them, after a period of time of being seizure free, you can actually take them off their medication and they can maintain their seizure freedom even off medication. In other words, they are so-called cured. Then there's that proportion of patients um, that are the difficult to control population where two, one third of the patients, you try different medications. It's difficult um, getting to the point of being seizure free, even under the best circumstances, sometimes with one, two or three medications, you may still only get them to the point where they have seizures maybe once a month, once every two months, and for some patients, even weekly or daily. Generally, those patients who have poorly controlled seizures or difficult to control seizures have more epileptic brains. Uh, they may have structural abnormalities in their brains. They may have genetic forms of epilepsy where the seizures are difficult to control. And it's that group of patients uh, which is very difficult. It's difficult for the patients. Uh, the seizures affect them um, cognitively, psychologically. They frequently have other morbidities such as depression, anxiety, agitation. And, and for them, epilepsy is but one part of their disease. Both leucosamide and parampinol are, are very um, gratifying additions to our armamentarium. They, they're both very good drugs. Parampinol specifically um, has um, an advantage of having a long half-life. So from a compliance standpoint, it's great. And um, specifically in terms of its effectiveness for generalized seizures, both partial, uh, both secondary generalized seizures and primary generalized seizures have a very bus, a robust response. So in terms of compliance, only having to take it once a day and its effectiveness for generalized seizures, that's where I really see um, uh, parampinol as being very effective. It is also effective for, partially, for partial seizures, but there are lots of medications that are available for partial seizures. So that's, that's really where it fits in from an effectiveness standpoint. Um, as you uh, get to use higher doses of parampinol though, uh, it does have a side effect of agitation, irritability, and, and even homicidal ideation, um, rarely. Uh, so that's something you have to watch, and, and, and it is more likely to occur as you increase the dose and get to higher doses. But uh, in many patients, they are well controlled even on lower doses. So I think the focus there would be generalized seizures, whether they secondary generalized or uh, primary generalized, um, and if you can get away with using lower doses. Lacosamide um, is a very well tolerated drug that is, is effective for partial onset seizures and, and partial complex seizures. Um, and I see it as a, a very good addition in patients with uh, partial complex seizures, even as first line therapy, um, because of the fact that it's very well tolerated.